everyone, it's Julia from Julia Spento. Um, thanks for stopping by. And today, if you haven't noticed, I'm going to be covering magazines that have been creatively inspiring me um, for the last couple years. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to start. <laughs> and again, some of these are not up to date in the issues, but I thought I'd share anyway. Uh, a lot of you are probably aware it's the Stampington creation, of course, uh, Bella Grace. This is from the U.S. Um, it's quite a substantial magazine, but it also has its substantial price. In the U.S., it's already on the newsstand $20, so I have no idea how they're going to upcharge this um, in other countries. But that being said, it should get a lot of beautiful eye candy, the photo photography in here, the stories in here are very inspirational. Um, they also have a little bit of the self-help aspect of it where they have prompts and things like that to get you thinking. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a lovely, lovely layout, lovely photography, um, and inspirational. Um, uh, I don't know quite if I want to do a subscription to this <laughs> yet, but I do randomly, you know, I'll see if it's, you know, the articles are, uh, inspiring enough for me to purchase it, but usually the, the imagery is just so gorgeous. Um, but again, a lot of these, I, I will forewarn you, a lot of these magazines, for us in the U.S., um, they're international, so there's an upcharge. <laughs> so uh, it seems like the only creative magazines we have here are usually from Stampington, to be honest with you. And, it, and it's not like it's cheap for us here either in the U.S., so... You have been forewarned. <laughs> so anyway, that, that is the Bella Grace. Simple Things is a UK magazine. Um, here in the newsstands, it's roughly around $10. And in the UK, it looks like it's about £4.99. Um, this one is more about, you know, enjoying the simple things in life, as it says here. And it's more culinary based, I, I feel. Um, they have articles on, you know, like upcycling and, you know, just general like information, you know, look at that infographics and things like that. So I I like I like it in terms of just like the imagery, the little stories, the you know the recipes that are shared in here. I, it's it's lovely. It's a lovely little magazine. Um, it is a little bit harder to find here in the U.S. I, I feel like they usually only carry maybe three three of these at a time, and even then they kind of migrate it <laughs> depending on whoever is putting it away at the time, I think. Sometimes it's in the culinary section and sometimes it's in the lifestyles. And I even found it in the uh, women's interest area as well. So um, yeah, you have to kind of look around for this, but it is a lovely magazine. I, I would say, if anything, just take a gander at it if you stop by the local Barnes and Nobles. Or those of you who are in the UK and are lucky enough to have a lot of these magazines, check it out. It's not that bad, <laughs> price-wise for you guys. Um, Pop Shop Magazine. Uh, this one was a little bit harder for me to find. I think this one I found in the Barnes and Nobles, Barnes and Nobles over in LA area um, in California. Uh, again, this is another UK magazine. It's an illustrated magazine of new writing, they call it. So, you know, the um, sto short stories, poetry, things like that with lovely little illustrations here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So illustrations with a lot of these stories. Not all the stories in poetry, but certain ones. And I, and I kind of like that. I kind of like the melding of writing and imagery. It's just, it's really pretty. And I, and I really enjoy, um, you know, modern poetry, modern, you know, story, you know, like a little bit more edgy stories with not crazy illustrations, which sometimes a lot of these modern sci-fi um writing magazines are like so this is a little bit more calmer i feel but um yeah it's just it's just really nice uh you know you get a chance and if you see it it's called pop shot and you know take a gander at it it's nice um again another stampington this is the artful blogger for those of you who blog those of you thinking about blogging or you have a business and where you have to blog. Um, I, I found this is really nice in terms of having inspirational stories about people who who are, were in the thick of it, 
or how they started and you know etc etc but beautiful beautiful um again pictures you know and they cover all sorts of bloggers everyone from those who you know draw to knitting to um you know those who take photography uh writers things like that it's, it's just it's just lovely but it it really kind of gets into the story of the people behind the blogs so if you're interested in that i'd say pick it up if at least if not a subscription at least to take a gander at uh you know one or two issues to kind of see you know what sort of problems some people have or what sort of inspired them to start their blog um how you know what things keep them going things like that so yeah it's a lovely another lovely little stemmington magazine price wise we're looking at roughly around 15 dollars in the u.s um and it looks like this may be a quarterly magazine I'm not quite sure but I again I'll leave all the information on my blog later on with the links and uh, how you can you know get a hold of these so yeah say you know check it out sometime if you get you know, get a chance if for anything again the eye candy is lovely ah Frankie uh, those of you who are in Australia it's easier to get a hold of here the first time I saw it was actually on the Omoi Zaka uh, play, uh, website. I was getting ordering some um, Midori thing items. They're based in the U.S. and uh, they have like a section on books and magazines, kind of one off one off things that are a little bit kitschy of interest. And I, you know, I ordered an issue then, and I really liked it. They kind of cover everything that is creative, so everything from the music industry to fashion to art, crafts, you name it. They kind of cover it. And what I, what I really like is all their covers are usually done by some sort of illustrator, as you see here. And then, you know, the, you know, the articles, the imagery, just another lovely little thing, a little bit off the beaten path. And again, a lot of this is probably, probably because it's different for me being based in the U.S. that I find these things uh, really interesting. But I think in general, you'll find it, you know, a creative little, tip, you know, nugget. You know, those of you who are in the U.S., if you're interested but not wanting wanting to fully commit to a subscription, I'd say check out like Omoizaka or just check online. You might may find some online shops that maybe carry a few issues that you can check out. Um, but I did not see this in Barnes & Noble. So I went ahead and got a subscription, by the way. But I did not see this in Barnes & Noble, unless anybody else has seen it, you know, give a shout out in the comments, but, um, I, you know, I like it, it's fun. Uppercase, who doesn't know about uppercase? Oh, it's okay if you don't know about uppercase, but <laughs> it's about, it's, you know, it's for the creative, the curious, or whatever their tagline is, but, um, it's, you know, again, another magazine where they cover people and the creative field could you know have to do it, it could an article can do with like um a specific person you know they can go into their art their their shop whatever but it's a lot of creative inspiration and again they also have themed mag you know themed magazines so it's um a quarterly magazine so four times a year and it's based in canada I'll let you know about that and usually there's like a major theme uh for instance there was a one on all color one on textile, you know, one on whatever, typography, things like that. So for those of you who don't want to commit to a subscription, I'd say check out their website and look at some back issues on subject matter that's of interest to you. I, I guarantee you, like, for instance, if you are into color, color theory, you'll adore their color issue, um, you know. So, yeah, check them out. It's, it's a definite yes. You do have to at least look at one issue. Um, and of course, who doesn't know that I love Flo? I've had them since they first came out with their English version here in the U.S. and I found it in, in Barnes & Noble. Um, they're from the Netherlands. Uh, and of course, I got a subscription to this, but you can now find it fairly easily if the timing is right at, at Barnes & Noble's. And um, obviously in other countries, you probably have to ask your... Um, you stand if they're going to carry it or if they carry it if they can hold one for you because apparently these things disappear quickly 
Um, again, here, I'll do a quick flip through of the most current issue. So lovely articles, people. Um, they add, of course, these little journals, sometimes papers you can cut up and use in your journal. They have prompts. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's usually a very lovely magazine, but it's definitely meant for you to utilize it. Um, sometimes, like I said, they have writing prompts in here, journals you could tear out, paper you could tear out. Um, so yeah, definitely get a flow or get your hand on a flow if you can. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about flow in it in a little bit, but I found this fairly recently. This is a UK magazine called Breathe. Um, Breathe and making time for yourself. Uh, well, it's a well-being, mindfulness, creativeness, escaping magazine, they say. So what caught my interest was, oh, yeah, this illustration, you know, it's just great. I love this kind of illustrations. But um, the articles are lovely. You know, it's just talking about taking time for yourself. And, of course, they have the creative aspect of it, cover art, things like that. Um, they do have, like, little things, notebooks where you can write, which is cute. Papers, you can probably cut up. Um, again, a lot of these magazines now are covering coloring. If you love coloring, um, some people like to color it, cut it up, and put it in their journals as well. But um, a lot of these, although I, I don't tend to attack my magazines, I, I love them the way they are, but I think this year I'm going to stop treating them like there's some sort of precious commodity and actually utilize them, cut them up and use them. So. That's my goal for this year. But anyway, <laughs> um, this is another lovely magazine. This is from the UK as well. Here in the US, uh, I purchased it for roughly $13. Um, I'm not quite sure how much it costs in the UK because it looks like they covered the price. But um, yeah, it's a lovely little magazine. I'd say check it out if you can. I found it at Barnes and Nobles. And um, before I go, I thought I'd cover what I saw in Barnes. Um, actually, I saw it since December. They occasionally have these amazing little displays, flow displays with a lot of stuff in it. This one that I saw uh, yesterday had this poster, you know, Paper Lovers book, and this Mindfulness Workbook number two. And they had the, the 2017 diary, as well as, you know, like a basic year wall calendar type of thing. Um, yeah, so I had to get these two. That being said, this one was ridiculous. Um, it's about $27.99. I don't know if it's worth $27.99, but I think I just have an obsession with flow stuff in general. So <coughs> uh, regardless, I bought it. Uh, and so it's posters, postcards, things like that, images. So these are all ones that, it looks like they fold, oh wait, no, here we go. So it looks like it folds, so I have to kind of tear it to get into the other sheets. I don't like tearing things, but I'm going to because this is a paper lovers and I should love the paper, right? Not just like stare at it. So yeah, there's that. The mindfulness workbook. I don't know if anybody got last year's, but you know, it's just lovely little prompts, stories, um, but it's really, trying to get you to like really look into yourself, be internal, <laughs> be a little bit more internal with your life. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. If anything, it's fun to look at, but there are obviously articles that can help you and inspire you. Um, they do have a flap in the back with a couple of things. Um, let me pull it out for you. So here's a little poster on being mindful getting breathing space it looks like and um, here's a little journal flow journal um, you know it's very similar to the size of the weeks and it has your little articles areas for you to write and of course lovely illustration so yeah those are the things that have been inspiring me um, last few years a little bit off the beaten path now it doesn't mean that I don't look at basic US magazines. <laughs> I tend to look at, um, you know, things like Real Simple. For those of you, you, of you who don't know about Real Simple, it's more of like a organizational magazine. So not that I'm terribly organized, but it's just, it's a really nice magazine to kind of look at things um, in simplifying life, right? So Real Simple is nice. 
Um, Martha Stewart is another magazine where they cover things like craft, things in around the home, organization, things like that. So for me, when I when I look at her stuff, I think it's Living is one of her magazines. Um, it, she also has like things on cooking and things like that. So it's random for me when I'm gonna get a Martha Stewart magazine, right? But <laughs> you know, a lot of you who are in based in other countries may find it refreshing and different. I don't know. Like for instance, for me, apparently I have an affinity for UK magazines. I don't know why I didn't see these when I lived there, which was back in 2008. But um, yeah, I'm really loving them now, apparently, for a premium price. Um, <laughs> um, in terms of the other ones that I look at, uh, you know, I not that I've been writing a lot lately, but I do like things like this. And I, and I don't have a subscription to this, but, um, you know, like the Writer's Workbook, Writer's Magazine, Writer's Digest, things like that. Like, you know, I'll grab, if, if a certain subject matter is of interest to me, I'll grab it. They're in the U.S. Um, in the U.S., it's roughly around $10. I don't know if this is imported into other countries because, like, for instance, in the U.K., you guys have such wonderful, wonderful writing magazines there alone. So... I don't know if you guys get U.S. based ones. Um, so yeah, there's that. And um, occasionally, no, more than occasionally, I will get magazines that I have no idea what they're saying, but the eye candy is just so wonderful. I purchase them. So sometimes it can be in Japanese. Sometimes, for instance, like in Flow, um, they do magazines for France, Germany, those two at the very least. I don't know if they do Spain. I think they do Spain as well. But um, if the illustration and stuff like that is compelling enough, I just buy them just to look at the eye candy. I have no idea what they're saying, but I like it. It looks wonderful, so I get it. So <laughs> if you guys have any um, suggestions on any sort of uh, creative-based magazines that would be of interest, share. Share below. I would love to see them, even if I don't understand the language. So... Um, thanks for stopping by and I hope one of these will inspire you if it hasn't already. I would love to hear from you guys if you think um, anything in particular is a little bit more worthwhile because you know, again it's, it is a bit of an investment for these but um, you know it, or if not. So I'm going to be posting on my blog more information about where to get these lovely things um and yeah either a comment here or on my blog and yeah hope you enjoyed this one take care bye